Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. This is a 2019 release. We're discussing the new Tudor Black Bay 41 S&G for steel and gold. A combination of steel and of gold. This watch launched this year at Basel World and it's a handsome alternative to something like a Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39 or even something like a Milgauss. Now the watch is impressive on the wrist because it's broad from lug to lug. And again, you're looking at my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, but the watch measures 50.2 millimeters with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs, a 41 millimeter case, and impressively only 11 millimeters of thickness. So this is definitely Rolex, not Tudor thickness. One of the advantages of the ever narrowing collection of ETA powered Tudor watches is that they are much thinner than the Tudor in-house calibers. And that's exactly what we have here with this ETA 2824 powered model. Now the timepiece features a combination of steel and yellow gold. And let's talk a little bit about that yellow gold. The bezel is solid yellow gold, but the crown as well as the center links of the bracelet are wrapped in yellow gold. This is not to be confused with plating. Wrapping means taking a substantial thick gauge section of gold and bending it around a steel core. And you can see to good effect in profile how thick that yellow gold is on the center links themselves. You really get a good sense of its thickness. It will never wear through. Unless you gnash it against a rock, it's never going to look like anything other than gold externally. Now there are also steel links and you can see this is sort of a quasi jubilee bracelet on a Tudor watch. The removable links fixed by screws of course and there is a deployant clasp that features internal spring loaded ceramic pin snaps to maintain its tight tolerances, its click, its clack, its snap over time. There's a clamshell system and you can see differential finish both polish and satin. You'll also note satin finishing on the gold sections, satin finishing on the shoulder links but polish down the center and polish on the outer faces. The nuance is a appreciated. You have those nostalgic bevels designed to remind us that once upon a time Rolex and Tudor cases were made by the same source. They were shared. They were both Rolex stamped and invariably they included hand finished bevels. These are mechanically executed but they're nostalgic and welcome all the same. You have the Tudor Rose logo that was roughly early 1968 and prior and then on the dial you have the Tudor Shield logo that was mid 1968 and subsequent. A lovely chapter ring or gilt golden style print chapter ring with applique rather than printed indices and that is an upscale feature that's welcome on this timepiece as you can see it does have an upscale appearance the timepiece with a little bit of a nod to the late 60s to mid 70s Tudor Snowflake Submariners in the form of the hour as well as the seconds hand and of course a little barrel shaped or vaulted self winding script across the bottom to remind you of 50s and 60s Tudor timepieces screw down crown 150 meters water resistant and underneath the case back ETA 2824 tank tough bi-directional automatic winding 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate 38 hour power reserve and hacking or stop seconds. This watch is a very simple and pleasing package. Beefier than any Oyster Perpetual. You can see this 41 millimeter three hand time only Tudor Black Bay 41 SNG and make it yours on the watch box. The Tudor Black Bay 41 SNG by night. Note the loomed seconds hand.